Let's go over how you assess and find the T-junction. Um, we normally try to approach in a systematic way, which means we need to identify the short head and the long head of the biceps. And to do that, we start quite proximal, where we have on the lateral side a lateral compartment, then we identify the fascia between what is the lateral compartment and the posterior compartment. And that's the long head of the biceps that we have then here on the posterior side of that compartment. So we keep our eye on that fascial plane. And as we go distal, we look for a column that comes in between what well, was the long head of the biceps and the lateral compartment and it is two fascial planes so the first one is here the second one is next to it and we refer to that as the tram lines because they're pretty parallel and use your probe skills here to optimize that if you flatten the, the fascial plane out you can see it beautifully as a bright line but if it's in a more vertical position you lose that and sometimes it can be very difficult to identify that compartment then the other trick is to slowly push your probe down and then you can see that there's three compartments all moving in their own way. So you can, even if you don't see the fascial plane here, you can see it as a column uh, that's moving independently. The other one is that little bony marker here, little prominence here, where the fascia uh, is attached. So once you have identified your, um, your short head, which is that tram line, you're going to go distally. And if you keep your eye on it, you can see the short head is getting bigger and bigger. This whole column here, I just make it look uh, more vertical for now just to uh, make it a bit easier to explain so you got here the first and that's the second tram line and then we keep our eye more posterior which is then this area which is the long head of the biceps the long head of the biceps as we go distally will get shorter and if I just trace it distally until it disappears just uh, to visualize that for you everything draws to the superficial uh, fascia there and becomes joins in with the tendon now when I go back up a little bit more so the bicep, the long head of the bicep is still a bit bigger. Then we have a nice picture here of the short head with the tram lines. And I can, again, I can push that to make it more stand out. And here is your sciatic nerve in the, in the posterior side as a landmark as well. Now, that's, that's the area where you start looking for these T-junction injuries, which is, this is the anterior fascia, and then that is the, uh, the, the compartment line between the long head and the short head. Um, the tendon area is there. So that's where we look for all these T-junction injuries. If there's a big, large injury or it's got a deep injury, of course, it's quite close to the sciatic nerve. So it's good to have the sciatic nerve there as a marker so you can see in relation to the muscle where the injury is. And that's how we identify it. So you have a logical way of always finding the short head and follow the muscle from the proximal start the short head all the way through to the T-junction. That way, again, you get all the information as you get to that point, and you've got a nice way of always being confident to end up scrutinizing that T-junction carefully.